This lesson is going to be on alternative and renewable energy sources. The main types that we're going to talk about are wind, hydro, solar, geothermal, and biomass. This particular chart shows different types of renewable energy production as well as the consumption. Uh, the key below shows you which types. Hydroelectric power consumption is in blue. Uh, geothermal energy consumption is in the brown and is uh, at the highest level of energy. Um, the solar and photovoltaic uh, production of electricity is in the green and is fairly flat lined, but it seems to be uh, upticking over the last year or so. Yellow is wind energy, and as you can see, it's on a steady uptick. We've obviously had uh, thousands of wind generators installed across the country over the last decade, and we will continue to do so. And then total biomass energy consumption uh, is at the highest level here on the chart. Now this particular chart illustrates the various types of uh, energy produced in the United States. You can see the single largest amount is petroleum. So all the various um, products that we use uh, from petroleum, um, gasoline, jet fuel, diesel, heating oil, all of those. Uh, natural gas provides 26% of our energy um, it uh, is a large uh, component of fuel used to generate electricity. It's also used in over 50% of residential houses for hot water heating um, as well as space heating. Uh, nuclear power only representing 8%. But the piece here that I, I want to show you is the piece that's been pulled out to the right. 9% of all the energy produced in the United States is coming from all renewable energy sources. So if you look at every one of those, hydroelectric, wood, biofuels, wind, uh, waste, geothermal, and solar photovoltaic power and energy. All of it is uh, comprises only 9% of our existing uh, energy production. Here again is another illustration of the type of fuel used to generate electricity. And you can see a steady uptick going forward in the use of wind generation uh, for electricity. Uh, solar is increasing, a little bit of geothermal. Uh, biomass is not used that much for generating electricity, but you can see it's fairly steady. And then, of course, um, hydropower. Uh, at the present time, there, you know, there are no new hydroelectric dams being built in the country, so that's uh, expected to be fairly stable. Wind power uh, once was used for mechanical drives only. It's gaining in popularity as a clean alternative source of electricity using turbine generators. You know, the old um, windmills, as they were called, were used on farms to draw water up uh, from aquifers to serve as wells on their land. And uh, way, way back, they actually did things like uh, ground flour and corn and those types of things. Um, today, we have large wind farms that are being built across the country where wind becomes a natural resource. Uh, some of the concerns with these, obviously, noise pollution in the area for the residents of that area, and there have been numerous reported uh, deaths to uh, flocks of birds flying in those areas. And as you can see, the picture on the left there just shows what are some 750 uh, kilowatt turbines in the state of Minnesota on a large wind farm there. Hydropower, uh, basically using water uh, force as, uh, as energy. Traditionally, it had been used to um, churn uh, mills. That's why we would have those um, water mills and uh, again they did several things with those from a mechanical energy standpoint but today we have hydroelectric generators we have uh, most predominantly hydroelectric dams but we also have what are known as tidal powered turbines Now these are actually utilizing the uh, current flows uh, generally in and out of, uh, of a river or in and out of some type of an inlet um, they use these in the North Sea uh, off of Scotland uh, there's an experimental one in the East River in New York City as well. And again, there are um, uh, subsurface turbines that actually spin as the current goes in one direction or another, and those drive a generator which produces the electricity. Solar energy has been around for quite some time. Um, the interest in it and the expansion of it really began with the oil embargo of 1973 and 1974. And then the second embargo in 1979 caused even more uh, interest in it. Uh, the idea is to collect heat and energy from the sun and use it for things uh, such as pure heating. 
uh, generation of steam for electric turbines or to actually create electricity directly which be, would be the use of photovoltaic cells. Um, in a lot of cases it's used to you know, heat water uh, even for space heating. And we generally have two types. The passive solar uh, energy is using the direct heat of the sun. There are solar collectors and they can uh, direct the heat in a particular area. Um, it's primarily used for space and water heating and it can also used, uh, be used to create steam. So some of the panels you might see on office buildings or uh, residences may, do, may be doing nothing more than circulating water through for hot water heating. Um, others, uh, I mean you would probably recognize the difference, uh, are the photo photovoltaic ones that are producing power. And again, this, gets, this brings us to the active part. Uh, it's the photovoltaic conversion of sunlight to electricity using semiconductive materials. Okay, it's dependent on the atmosphere condition and the Earth's uh, position relative to the sun. And obviously off to the right there you see a photovoltaic array, um, small scale uh, use here. But you see them more and more throughout. Um, they're using them now for traffic signs, um, communication systems, uh, for instance pipeline companies or um, any type of long distance uh, lines or cables or whatever else signals um, are transmitted and the power is coming from photovoltaic cells. Geothermal energy we generally think of geothermal energy as, as natural steam you know coming from geysers and from other places and in those cases it could be used for direct space heating it can also be used directly for industrial processes. Um, steam will also drive uh, steam turbines uh, at a power plant or on site somewhere where there is the geothermal steam coming up. But a flip side of that, which a lot of people are not necessarily aware of, is the fact that you also have geothermal energy that's used for space cooling. You know, after all, if you go several feet below the surface, the, um, the soil and the temperatures down there are much cooler than above ground and so you can literally drill down into cooler area and draw up cool air to use for um, space cooling. This is becoming more and more um, prevalent. Um, I have personally seen uh, large homes that use this as well as um, oh, mid-size uh, office buildings. Biomass, these are the various types when we talk about biomass and, and energy coming from biomass. Uh, we're talking about things like wood uh, garbage, uh, crops, um, various alcohol fruits, so in other words fruits that can produce some type of an alcohol that can be burned as energy, and then landfill gas. Biomass, uh, the one form here, is landfill gas, you basically you have decaying trash uh, that's in landfills and it's going to create methane. Um, you know all the biological material that breaks down and decays will end up giving off methane, methane gas. And over time, the older landfills will actually have pockets of methane within them. And there are, um, you know, people who will go out and they literally will poke a hole down into the landfill and they will get the pockets of natural gas and they'll use it on site mostly. They can use it to drive um, some small turbines or small generators uh, to create uh, power on site some cases they may have a process whereby they need uh, to um, create some steam and so they use the natural gas for that as well. Another form of biomass is to actually uh, take solid waste and convert it to energy or trash to energy. This is where you're using solid waste that would normally go to a landfill. You're using it as a fuel to create heat via combustion and in turn create steam uh, from the boilers uh, where the combustion is taking place. Uh, the steam can actually be sold for industrial purposes uh, or generation or the generation of electricity can be um, accomplished by using the steam as well. Now there's a company in Fairfield, New Jersey by the name of Cogentrix Corp and they actually build and operate several of these uh, trash to energy or solid waste to energy facilities around the United States wood and wood waste. Uh, these are normally the byproducts from large uh, you know, uh, wood mills and, and paper mills. And what they'll do is, again, to be efficient and to be um, environmentally conscious, they'll go ahead and use the wood or the wood waste, the wood pulp, 
they can actually burn it and then it becomes a heat source where they can create their own steam that they'll use in the process uh, say for instance for making um, particle board or even paper they can also use the heat source to run uh, small generators on site for their own um, consumption and operations uh, the warehouser company uh, a huge manufacturer of various forms of, of lumber and wood and um, uh, particle board and those types of things uh, does this on location with um, a couple of their very large facilities they have in southeast Oklahoma. And most of us are more familiar with this type of biomass. We're, we're making fuel from things like crops, grasses, and biodegradable matter. One of the more uh, well-known ones, of course, is making ethanol that we use uh, as an additive to gasoline in our cars. And the primary uh, food source there is corn, but there's also um, sugars that can be broken down into uh, alcohol as well as uh, certain types of grasses. And on the biodiesel front, uh, we could use vegetable oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, and then recycled grease from restaurants once it's, it's cleaned. Um, you can burn any of these in an existing uh, diesel-powered vehicle. 